Hi YouTube, let's paint Eddard Stark, Warden of the North. I'm currently, I guess I'd say very into, though obsessed could be closer to the mark, A Song of Ice and Fire by Simon. Not only is it a great game in its own right, but it's set in a fantasy universe I've been a fan of for most of my life. It's one of maybe three tabletop war games in existence that I know anything about the lore of, and that, I guess, is a pretty big selling feature. Anyway, being a long-time reader, I quite naturally and correctly selected House Stark for my first army. Eddard Stark is one of the better commander options for the faction as of this recording, at least, and given his likely place at the head of my force and his importance to the narrative, I want to do a little extra work to get him up to a higher visual standard than the rank-and-file troops. To do that, first a bit of research. I quite like the box art for the game. It's sketchy and painterly and consistently desaturated. So far, I've been sorta kinda trying to make my units fit that aesthetic. With Eddard, I'm going to do the same thing. The easiest way to do that is to choose the right colors in the first place, so I slap the character art into color.adobe.com and figure out a basic color palette for the figure. Nice. With that sorted out, it's time to prime. For me, that almost always means a black and white value sketch. For the last couple of years or so, I've been painting mostly with contrast paints and inks, and the value sketch with transparent paints workflow has become pretty comfy. It lets me go really, really fast compared to layering up from a pure black base, and the end result looks realistic in a way my blending skills with acrylics just don't support. And this isn't just zenithal priming either. I'll put white ink in places direct light won't reach, because I know that some kind of a highlight will go there regardless, and I can use additional layers of pigment with higher opacity to tune exactly how light or dark an area might be later on. Now, somebody much better and smarter than me said you can almost always make things darker, so it doesn't hurt to start a little bit higher up on the old value scale. Continuing on with the airbrush, it's time to turn this cape gray. Space Wolves gray is really transparent and subtle, but it tints the whole gradient into the blue spectrum and that's where we want it for this model. The Starks are a cold people, and their clothing should be colored to match. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Well that pretty much sums up my relationship with this flesh tint ink from Dale Rowney. You should skip this step if you're following along, and base coat Eddard's skin however you normally would. Yes, this is foreshadowing. Okay, continuing on with the cape. I want the shadows shady, shadowier, more shaded. So I go ahead and add some Payne's Gray in there. Payne's Gray is basically a darker and more opaque Space Wolves Gray, so this looks real nice. I make a little oopsie here with the airbrush in the front of the cloak, but elected to roll with it and just turn that area into a shadowy one. I could certainly have gone back and reset the value sketch in that spot, but this is still a gaming model at the end of the day, so I just roll with it. Our third and not even close to final shade of gray is Griff Charger Gray. This color has kind of a greenish tint to it, and that'll help us set off the tunic from the other clothes later on. I apply several coats of this, letting the paint dry completely between each one, to build up a little bit more saturation, just to make it clear that it is a different color from the cloak. Ed's hair and beard we base coat with Sigor Brown. Sigor Brown is a really opaque color, and it's not good for much, but it is okay for a base coat for hair. Uh, Eddard's hair is supposed to be dark in the novels, so I wanted to make sure that I was set up to paint that with a minimum of fuss and bother. Another shade of brown, Contrast Wildwood, is step one in most of my leather recipes. The scabbard, boots, and various belts and straps all get a nice coat of this. Wildwood is like Valle Vallejo? Vallejo. Vallejo. German Camo Black Brown, which is like a base coating Swiss Army knife, but transparent and contrasty. And to break up the palette of gray, more gray, and brown, and more brown, we make Eddard's pants a uh, pterodon turquoise. Um, 
I kind of just picked this color because it fit the overall palette, but no other thought was given to it. I don't know if these are supposed to be, I mean, they wouldn't be denim. This is a medieval sort of a guy. Anyway, his pants are blue. Okay, back to the flesh tone. Over top of the flesh tint ink, I brush on some Gulliman flesh. The flesh tint is the greeny yellowy component of the skin tone, and the contrast paint puts life back into it. I've used this approach many times before, and should really stop doing it. The flesh tint ink is so fragile that one errant brush stroke when you're putting on the Gulliman flesh will absolutely destroy it. So now I'm going to have to paint up the skin from essentially scratch and hope I can avoid any goofy texture there when I'm done. Cool. Time for metallics. Frankly, most metallic paints look like garbage. I said it. They're boring and ugly, and they look weird and wrong. So don't just use lead belcher out of the pot or whatever. Get some Vallejo metal color white aluminum, base coat the shiny stuff with that, and then color it with inks or contrast paint. In this case, use Agaros Dunes for the gold, and Space Wolf's Grave for the little teeny bit of the sword that you can see peeking out of the scabbard. After tinting our metallics, it's time for oil washes. Actually, just one oil wash. Uh, this figure doesn't need a whole bunch of different colors, uh, just one all over burn number is gonna do the trick. Being able to highlight by subtraction with an oil wash, as you'll see, really saves you a ton of time and I just can't recommend using these highly enough. It's appropriate for nearly every type of painting you might do, whether you're batch painting a large number of units or painting a single figure, it does so much in one step that it's, it's really something that is worth looking into if you haven't tried it before. All you're going to do is mix up a real heavy wash with the oil paint and some white spirit. We'll get to it in a minute, but I actually didn't thin this enough, um, which is not the end of the world, but it does make the cleanup process a little bit trickier, uh, but nothing that you can't deal with if you're a little bit patient about it. So anyway, we stir and stir and stir some more, and soon we will be happy with the consistent of this and be ready to apply it to our model. Now, applying oil washes requires a great deal of finesse and care. Uh, I'm not being serious. You really just slap this on there. On this model, I avoid the base because I don't want to deal with cleaning the oil paint off that texture paste that's applied to it. There's already plenty of definition and shade and shadow and texture on there. I don't really need the help of the oil paint to improve it. So once you have covered your kind of okay paint job in a thin layer of white spirit and burnt umber, you put that thing down and walk away for about 20 minutes. So after your oil wash has dried a little bit, it's time to wipe that sucker down. To do this, you'll need some Q-tips or makeup sponges and a little bit of white spirit. And what you're going to do is very carefully, uh, hold on a second. Okay, that's better. Yeah, Q-tips sometimes don't work, and they especially don't work when you have mixed the wash too thick, like I did here. You remember when I mentioned that before? Yeah. Okay, anyway. Makeup sponges, white spirit, and a downward motion so that you're leaving shadows in areas that would actually be shadowed as you clean off the model. And you just proceed like this until it looks right. I grab a paintbrush here to loosen up some of the pigment that is deposited where I can't reach with the sponge, just so that I'm able to get it out of there.
So some folks will tell you that you have to wait a day for oil washes to dry. And they're not wrong, but you actually don't have to. The oil wash is thinned with so much white spirit that it dries much quicker than a thick full on layer of oil paint would. All right, with the model all cleaned up, it is time to move on to the fun stuff. First, I'm gonna glaze some scale color deep blue into the shadows. Uh, the oil wash kind of blended that Payne's gray in a little bit with our Space Wolves gray, and I just wanna reinforce those shadows, really make them saturated and deep to set them off from the rest of the folds of the cloak. And for highlighting the cloak and a lot of the other gray fabric, frankly, the heavy lifting is gonna be from Viejo Game Color Wolf Gray. This is essentially Space Wolves Gray from the Game Color line. Um, nice and opaque, covers well, really easy to do sketchy little cross hatches, lines, and that sort of thing. For the intermediate tone on the leather, I use Scale Color a Brown Leather, which should really not be all that surprising. And then I spend quite a while fixing the mess that I made of the skin tone. Undoing my mistake with that flesh tint actually probably took an hour, and the whole paint job was maybe three. So I was really annoyed. Anyway, so after reestablishing the base tone of the flesh with scale 75 light skin and basic flesh, I glazed some AK Interactive wine red into the recesses to bring life back to the face. And I do the same thing on the hands. And finally, we highlight the leather with a little bit of scale color Eroko. Um, I love this color. It's good for just about everything. In addition to finishing up the leather details, I also go back around the figure, do a little once over, add some more texture here and there, paint the eyes in, and generally tidy things up until I'm happy with the overall look. Throw on a couple grass tufts, and a little bit more fussing and fiddling, and well, it's time to take a look at what we've done. So I think this came out pretty well. I look forward to having Edder lead his honor guard into battle for House Stark. I hope that this was useful or inspirational or entertaining. I don't know. I hope you liked it. If you did, cool. See ya.